What is up there SEO pros? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to find and fix problems with your website architecture. Now if you like the roadmap I'm about to show you that covers a bunch of other things that could be wrong with a website in terms of its SEO over or overall just usability, make sure you head to the link in the description and grab this template. So let's start with the first thing, URL structure. Let's talk about some things that could go wrong here and why we would want to fix certain things around this. So first of all, if we look at a URL structure uh, of a website, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to use a free tool like Screaming Frog. So we're going to go ahead and open up Screaming Frog. If you're not aware of Screaming Frog, Screaming Frog is a tool that lets you crawl websites for free up to 500 URLs and it will do more if you buy the actual $180 year subscription but for a small website with under 500 URLs you should be fine so I'm just gonna plug in my website I'm going to filter by HTML and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go click on this little uh, tree button I guess and here I can see what the architecture sort of looks like now if I see here we have the home page uh, and then we have the blog and then we have how the different categories are being um, sort of presented so we have blog and then if I look at the URL there it is uh, and then if I look at the you know the next part so SEOs which is underneath blog and then the actual post here we go we got blog slash SEO slash you know post name now here's some stuff I want to look at first of all is this categorized correctly it should I have chasehunter.com forward slash blog forward slash category forward slash post name or should it just be chasehunter.com forward slash post name or chasehunter.com forward slash category forward slash post name uh, there's tons of different options here right and people get really confused with this now I try to follow a basic structure I like to see things categorized in a way that makes sense so seeing that I have a home page and then a blog that's categorized with different categories and then a post that goes with that category makes a lot of sense to me. So the URL structure here, which is chaserunner.com or domain.com forward slash blog forward slash SEO forward slash post name makes a lot of sense. Now, even if it doesn't make sense, say for instance, it's chaserunner.com forward slash post name, I might not want to recommend a change here unless for instance, there might not be a lot of traffic to this website already or there's not a lot of authority. Now, if the website already has a bunch of authority and traffic and it is using that structure, for instance, chaserunner.com forward slash post name, then I'm probably not going to want to recommend a change there unless it's absolutely necessary. So be careful when you're recommending these changes. Um, next, what we have is the actual post name itself. Now, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that's six words. I recommend that you try to do stick within three to five words per post or URL. Uh, anything after a certain uh, character limit, I think Google stops adding a lot of value to because just to give you guys a newsflash, if you didn't know, Google does uh, actually take URLs into consideration as a ranking factor. So you do want to be careful with how you're, how many words you're putting in here. I would try not to put too many, try not to get too wordy. But overall, um, you can see here, uh, the URL structure is pretty decent. We have uh, other things categorized as well, like services. Now, if we keep going down, okay, one thing that we see is uncategorized. We want to make sure we get you know URLs out of the uncategorized because we don't want anything to be uncategorized. But that's a little bit different, right? That has nothing to do with URL structure, just site architecture or you know indexation. But if I look at this, you know, how to get SEO clients, that's one, that one's way too long. So that might be worth changing. Now, like I said, it might not be worth it if it's already ranking really well, uh, because anytime you're going to need to change these, you're also going to have to do a 301 redirect. And it might not be worth it to do a 301 redirect to a new post if the, uh, the post is already ranking, because you are going to be losing some juice when you do a 301 redirect. So anyways, if we keep scrolling down, you can see products are categorized. Um, we got chaserunner.com forward slash product. Maybe it might be a good idea to have a category for that as well. Who knows? You know, it depends on the amount of products you have. Um, same thing with the blog. You know, it might make sense to have forward slash post name if it's not going to be a huge blog. But as you start to get way more content on the blog uh, and you start expanding, it's a good idea to be able to categorize those. So 
Um, really what it comes down to in terms of the URL structure is does it make sense? If I look at the website, is everything really categorized how it should be? If I go to services, SEO roadmaps, you know, does that fall under services, right? And should that be a more specific type of, of category, right? Should it be SEO services, right? Um, like that. I don't think so though, because you know, that's what works for me. Some people, you know, if you're local, like to do, you know, the location modifier in the, there as well. Um, like I said, the way you should do the URL structure in is, is in a way that makes sense where when people go to one part of the URL structure, it makes sense where they're at in comparison to the other part of the URL structure. So that's the best advice I can give around that in terms of fixing the URL structure. Um, you know, one of the things you might want to do is, uh, do a 301 redirect, which I use for that is called EPS redirects. And the way you use that is you go to plugins, add new, you find a tool called eggplant redirects. So eggplant redirects. You're going to download or inst install that and activate it. Then you're going to go to settings, EPS redirects. You're going to figure out which pages you want to redirect. So say for instance, you want to redirect this old page that has a weird URL structure to a new page. And then you would go ahead and just pretty much add that in there. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, alternatively, if you want to get Yoast Pro, Yoast also helps you do this um, as well. Uh, if you change one URL, it'll give you a warning pop up and actually let you automatically change it just by clicking on it. So that is helpful if you do want to drop the $80 on Yoast Pro. Um, in terms of anything else around the URL structure, you might want to no index or um, you know uh, 404 or 410 certain posts. Um, in terms of that, I will cover that down here. So we'll talk about that in a second. So in terms of specific URL problems, the things we'd be looking at around that, like I said, would be maybe things like uppercase letters or, you know, uh, contact dash three, or say for instance, the URL is really long. Um, a lot of the stuff you will also be able to find within Screaming Frog. So if we go into Screaming Frog and we look at uh, for instance, URI, it'll tell you, you know, are you using certain things? Are there duplicate URLs? Um, are some over 115 characters? So uh, in terms of specific URL problems, there's not that many um, that, you know, are bad unless you're doing certain things like this where it just looks really bad. Um, in terms of SSL, that's pretty straightforward. All you have to look at is on the side is whether or not, you know, the SSL certificate is green or not. If it's not, click on it and it'll tell you why, or it'll say your, you know, certificate's not fully secure. The best way to fix this I found, um, you know, first of all, get a good hosting company. I use SiteGround and um, call them up. I mean, if you don't know how to install it, you know, just call them up because I don't want to do an, ex an explanation tutorial showing you how to do SSL on every different type of hosting. It's very uh, easy if you just log into your cPanel generally. Um, but most of these hosting companies, will walk you through it. Just give them a call, say, hey, I need to install SSL. Most of them will walk you through it. I haven't had a company that hasn't helped me do that yet. Internal link structure. So um, similar to how site architecture looks, your internal link structure is pretty straightforward if you look at it from a uh, sensical standpoint. So if we look at, um, for instance, this hierarchy of different things, Generally, it makes sense for these posts to link to other related posts or maybe a related category or the blog or the homepage. Um, it just depends on, you know, what the point of the linking is and why you're linking. Uh, I try to link to my most valuable pages within my website um, based on the number of conversions they're bringing in and also how relevant those pages are. If I'm writing a blog post, it makes sense to link back to a homepage if I'm trying to explain to them about, you know, for instance, the brand, or for instance, uh, let's say, you know, what the brand is trying to rank for. Say it's like consulting, SEO consulting or SEO expert or something like that. I'm going to probably want to link that with the correct anchor text that makes sense to the homepage. Now, in terms of how many times you should be internally linking, I say about two to three internal links per like 500 words. Now, you can go over that. That's not always a problem. It's just that the more links you have, generally the um, more diluted the next link becomes uh, and also the previous link as well. So the more links you have, obviously you're going to be 
uh, sort of diluting the overall value of the of all the links on that page. Um, now, is that completely true in all scenarios? I don't know. I think there's a lot of people who have tons of links on their page and they still rank fine. I just think it also depends on the intent of that search. Um, the other thing is, look at this. I didn't even notice this until right now. You should not have an internal link that doesn't show up as a different color. That looks like a hidden link, which is definitely a problem and you can get penalized for that. So I will tell my web designer after this. Um, other things that you might want to figure out is uh, or do in terms of internal linking is sometimes it's better to link contextually instead of uh, with buttons. So here you can see I actually have anchor text associated with my link instead of you know just a button which appears here. Um, I prefer internal links. I feel that they're or sorry uh, contextual links. I feel that they're more powerful than buttons, um, but buttons still are fine and they are definitely um, necessary if you're going to be uh, trying to get conversions by placing them above the fold on your website, um, which basically means, you know, people don't have to scroll before they see a, ca a call to action. So buttons have their place, but I try, I would try to stick with contextual linking when you can, especially in blog type posts, that kind of thing. Um, in terms of other things around internal linking, I'm really just telling you guys, don't overcomplicate it. Uh, really, if you're going to be mentioning a service might be met worth mentioning other related services uh, as well as your home page um, same thing with your contacts maybe mention other top level pages it probably wouldn't make sense to mention a blog post and a contact page so just try to link where it makes sense and try to link you know two to three times per 500 words if you go over that not a big deal just you know don't over optimize in terms of internal linking if you're trying there's a difference between just putting a link for actual uh actually trying to help people and then also putting a link just because you want to put a link there and you want to rank another page because of internal links. So figure out if there's an actual purpose in the internal link. If there is, then put it there. Um, next we have site search. Basically all that is, is you're just going to be looking at, you know, whether or not there's a search function on the website. And if there isn't, you know, that's not always a bad, uh, it's not always a problem, but you know, sometimes it's helpful to be able to set that up so you can set up um, search analytics within Google Analytics. Uh, in terms of setting that up on your website, I think it's every di it's different for every theme. So I would just ask your web designer to fix that for you. And I actually should ask my web designer to fix that for me as well because we did that have that in the past. In terms of setting that up on Google Analytics, all you're going to do is log into Google Analytics, click on Google Analytics. Wait for it. <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to go to admin and I believe it should be around uh, site search. There should be site search. Hold on. Is it JS tracking info? No. Custom dimensions. Where is it? Basically, there's a button you click in here. I think it might be property settings, uh, which lets you enable site search. Um, and all you have to do is click on yes once you find it. It's in one of these tabs. I know it is. Um, and once you have that going, or sorry, once you click on it, what you're going to do is it's going to ask you the parameter. And the parameter is whatever the search is is at, or whatever the percent sign is after you do a search. So say for instance, site search was working. Usually what will happen is it'll go like percent queer, like equals S or something. Um, and that's basically the parameter you're going to plug into the Google analytics. Um, if that doesn't make sense, I'm really sorry, but uh, it's really easy to do. All you have to do, like I said, is basically just find the freaking site search. If you Google it, and then figure out what the parameter is after you do a search and then you just copy and put that in there and then you'll have it enabled and then in order to look at site search uh, you can just go into I think it's behavior or something site search overview and it'll show you the different search terms that are coming from the website it'll even show you the conversions with those as well so it's really good to do especially for clients and yourself um, to be able to track what people are searching and perhaps help them if you're there's if a bunch of people are searching and, they, and you want to put more pages on around that so last we have 404s, 301s, 302s. You already know how to do 301s. Uh, those are our permanent redirects. 302s are per temporary redirects. If you're going to be doing those, I'm sure there's a plugin for it. I don't normally do those. 
404s and then maybe 410s. Um, all you're going to have to do is just look in Screaming Frog to see if any of these problems are happening by scrolling down the sidebar and pretty soon we'll see somewhere around here uh, response codes. You can see here so there's five 404s. Um, you know, some looks like a good amount of redirects. We probably want to fix that. So the best way to do it really is to go into plugins, add new. I like to use a tool called broken link checker. And just type in broken link checker. And you're going to install it, activate it. Once you do that, um, you should go to tools, broken links, and you can see here it already has 15 um, that are 404 is not found. So I'm just going to click on all of those bulk actions, fix redirects, and I think that also fixes 404s as well. Let's see. <clears throat> so it just fixed redirects. Let's see if it'll fix 404s. Click on that again. Um, and then we'll just do unlink. Now what we could do is we could just edit URL and fix them if, for instance, the URL's changed. Um, you know, change this to, let's say, you know, blog slash SEO. So we would just go blog because we did change the URL structure. Boom. So that'll go ahead and fix that now. So now you guys kind of know how to do this. Um, not too difficult and uh, totally worth doing for a website. Gives you a lot of stuff that you can start fixing right away. Um, if you guys have any other questions and I didn't cover something, maybe I missed something, please let me know in the comments. And um, if you'd like to contact me for any reason, just head over to chaserunner.com forward slash contact to get a hold of me and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and until I see you all next time, happy SEOing.